Before traveling to Singapore, I didn't know very much about this country and I think that was pretty great. These days it's so easy to just google a place and you'll know everything you need to know before you go. The exact steps you have to take to get from the airport to your hotel and the top 10 things that you have to see on your visit. You'll know where everything is and what everything looks like before you're even there. And sometimes it can be nice to know some of these things, but it also takes away a bit of the adventure when traveling. So here are the five things that surprised me the most about Singapore. I barely saw any trash in the streets at all. Everywhere looks very neat and organized and just clean. There are no old chewing gums filling the pavements. And my favorite, not a single cigarette butt inside. Singapore is a very beautiful place and the cleanliness surely plays a part of that. Now we did wander through some back alleys and in behind some of the food halls and here it wasn't that clean but i mean you have to put the trash somewhere so that's quite all right by me and of course i didn't see all of singapore in just a few days so i'm sure that the more touristy areas are kept cleaner than some of the other parts of singapore but if you live in singapore feel free to let me know your take on the cleanliness as someone who actually lives there by all the stats, Singapore is one of the safest countries in the world. But more importantly to me as a tourist, it feels safe to be there and to walk around no matter what time of day it is. And I also got this feeling of like, oh, I really don't want to do anything bad or illegal on purpose or not on purpose, as Singapore really has some hefty fines. So compared to many other places I visit, I was just extremely aware of what I could and could not do and of all the rules. And I mean, I didn't even jaywalk, which is admittedly something I do normally. All of this perhaps comes at a cost though. I mean, there's surveillance everywhere. And just personally, I kind of prefer the more chaotic countries around Southeast Asia, where everything seems a bit more relaxed. Singapore does feel like a very strict place and where you have to do things in a very particular way. Now for a tourist visit, this is not something that bothers me at all, but it's definitely something I would think about if I decided to stay for a longer time. I was actually really surprised at just how walkable Singapore is. This is actually one of the reasons why I love traveling in Europe so much, as in so many cities, it's just so easy to walk everywhere, not have to rent a car and worry about parking and getting around. And Singapore does this really well. The sidewalks are really large and it's just a pleasure to stroll around this beautiful city. Although, of course, during the day, it can get really hot. There doesn't seem to be a lot of car traffic either, which again is nice for when you're just walking around. It of course helps that Singapore is not the largest city in the world. But then again, when you need to cover larger distances, you got the great MRT system, which I'll get to in just a minute. The one thing that did bother me a little bit is just how long you have to wait for the light to change at an intersection as a pedestrian. You can easily just stand there waiting and waiting for several minutes before the lights turn green. Okay, so the MRT, the rail system, what can I say? It's clean, very well connected, and it's very easy to get wherever you want to go. And I mean, I can compare it perhaps a bit to Copenhagen, where I live, and Copenhagen actually has a pretty good metro system as well, but there it's just way too expensive. So overall, I think Singapore has the best rail system that I have ever been to, at least. This one is probably my favorite one. There's greenery everywhere. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful and it must be such a joy to live in such a green city. Instead of having just a few parks here and there where all the greenery goes into, you have it all over the city and even on the buildings. And I'm sure it's great for the environment, for air pollution and so on. But from a completely selfish touristy view, it's absolutely fantastic as it just makes walking around the city that much more enjoyable. I also visited the Botanical Gardens in Singapore, which was also a pretty nice place to visit. And it was free to enter. There was lots of things to see and to do and quite a few locals just hanging about having a picnic.
I actually didn't know that Singapore was such a melting pot of different culture, ethnicities and religion. It's really cool and makes a visit that much more interesting as the different areas of the city each has their own unique feel to it. And I mean, it's also just quite interesting to see how humans work, I guess, settling down and grouping with people who are like us and who come from the same place as us. And beyond that, it just makes for a very unique and fascinating city. If Singapore was just a bunch of skyscrapers, it really wouldn't be as interesting. But you can walk out of the business district and be met with beautiful old buildings. Like in Chinatown, you got these small colonial buildings in the foreground and the huge modern skyscrapers in the back. It looks pretty amazing. And of course, the cultural mix is perhaps best displayed through the variety of food you can get. And Singapore has it all. In just a few days, we visited a bunch of different food halls or hawker centers and tried all sorts of amazing food. The food alone probably makes Singapore worth a visit. Singapore is famously one of the most expensive places in the world. This much I did know before coming here. But I travel on a budget, so I was very happy to learn that it's actually quite possible to visit Singapore on a budget. Of course, it won't be as affordable as other countries in the region. But my girlfriend and I, we stayed in a budget hotel. And I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it had everything we needed and it cost just $70 per night, which for Singapore is a pretty good price. And food can be very affordable too, if if you eat at the food halls, which you should. And luckily there are also plenty of free things to do all over Singapore. So my girlfriend and I ended up spending just about 100 Singaporean dollars per day for two people traveling on a budget. And I mean, it's not super cheap, but it's way less than I actually expected. And if you want to see how we only spend $100 per day, you can watch this video right here to see what we got up to and all the free activities we did and where we ate. All in all, Singapore is a pretty great country and I was pleasantly surprised by my visit here.